Hello, welcome back to another episode of Inside the Outsider, where we've been taking some of the tracks from the new record, The Outsider, and uh, stripping them back, showing you how they were written, um, some of the sounds, some of the gear behind uh, each song. So, um, this is song number two, episode number two, this is Work A Little Harder. Well, I've been told if you want to make a change some songs take a long time to become the uh, definitive versions of themselves. Uh, this song was certainly one like that. Um, I'd had various versions of this tune kicking around for a very, very long time, and I never quite felt right. Uh, we'd play them live, it would be great fun, but there was still something missing from the song. And it wasn't until many years after I'd written it, actually, um, I took it to Steve Crisanto, who produced most of The Outsider, and he suggested some fantastic things that really uh, gave the song its full potential. Um, some of the, the melodies in the verses, some little rhythm parts. Um, it toughened it up, it gave it a cool story, and um, I'm really happy with it. One of the really cool things about this track for me is um, it's kind of blues rock influence where the framework is there but you can really bend and manipulate that framework as much as you want to which makes this song so much fun for playing live so I'm gonna show you a little bit about what I mean by that um, as we break it down I'm gonna play the main riff and I'm gonna play uh, the verse progression uh, chord progression um, play a little bit of fiddly bits over that and then end with a chorus um, like I say, it's just great fun to play live, it's a big tough song, um, so let me show you what I mean. On to gear. Um, this song is in a different tuning, it's a whole step down from standard tuning, so that means different guitar, big heavy strings, um, and the tuning, it's like I say, exactly the same as standard, just a whole step down, so it's D, G, C, F, A, and another D. Um, and it's just a great big fat sounding tuning, I love it, I use it quite a bit. And this guitar is especially great at it. This is a private stock Paul Reed Smith McCarty uh, gold top with just one humbucking pickup and one volume control and that's it. It's kind of like a what would Billy Gibbons do kind of guitar. It's just fantastic and it rings like a bell. Um, so yes, this is this is uh, going into my goodie pedal board, um, and the only pedal I'm going to be touching is the Pete Cornish Boost um, for those little solo parts. Um, it's a great sounding pedal. I don't know how he does it, but it even sounds great when you haven't got the effect on. It's just incredible, um, and that's just hitting the front end of the amplifier uh, a little harder and giving a little bit more gain, a little bit more sustain and stuff. So. That amplifier is my Bludo Tone, Bludo Drive, um, nicknamed Mabel because of the purple blue rinse finish. Um, it's just a great amp, wonderful amp, and then that's going into my KW Cabs 4x10 cabinet with Celestian 10 inch speakers in there, I'm not sure what's in there, but Kurt is a genius, he's brilliant, those cabinets are absolutely incredible. And that's being mic'd up and into my little Pro Tools rig here at home. Um, and the only thing is I'm just putting a little bit of reverb, a little bit of delay in the computer, and that's it. So, let's, uh, let's play a little.
So that's the main body of the tune, uh, that's the section we're going to be looking at. Um, and it's great fun. So now we've got that kind of cool, almost funky style rhythm underneath in the verses. I'm going to add a few kind of Pete Townsend-esque just crash chords, just to keep that aggression, that momentum going. Um, so let's just stick them down. It's just slightly low again, so I'm going to roll back on my guitar volume like I did for those little verses. Uh, it just it just sounds less cluttered that way. So here we go. Alright, we've got that bit down and we can have some fun with some soloing now. So over the top of that, I'm going to kick in the Pete Cornish boost and just have a little bit of a fiddle. And uh, the really, really cool thing about this song for me uh, is that live it can go anywhere. It can be soft to begin with, loud, you can bring it up and down. Dynamics are so important, something that I really admire in Mark Knopfler's music. Um, and bass player can take a solo, keyboard player, any guest guitar players. Um, and we can just have fun and feed off each other with it, um, which is the beauty really in a lot of this style of music. Um, it can be very interactive, it can be um, different every night, which is really exciting to me. So, like I say, we're going to uh, up the game a little bit and have some fun. And now we've got all that guitar nonsense out of the way, I'm going to sing a little bit over the, uh, the chorus, give you a, a little blast of that, and uh, show you how it all kind of comes together.
I do hope you've enjoyed this episode of Inside the Outsider. They're great fun to do. It's really good for me to come back to these songs after they've been recorded and really strip them down. Uh, it's, it's great fun. So, um, if you haven't got your copy of The Outsider yet, you can get them at www.davynoles.com and you can get them on iTunes, all sorts of that digital stuff too, uh, which I will provide the links for. So, hope you've enjoyed it. See you again soon. Cheers. to work